Hey guys, we are doing something a little different this week and actually the next several weeks with our free will conversations. So one of the topics that gets a lot of play in these is nutrition. There's a lot to talk about and a lot to learn. What I wanted to do here was give you a different perspective other than my own. So what I did was talk to several of our members that are following a particular diet and who I think are doing it really successfully. So not only did I want to highlight what they're doing and why it's been successful for them, but also the process they've gone through to get to where they're at, changes and adjustments they've had to make since they started following this. So uh, we're going to kick it off this week with a chat about intermittent fasting with Tracy. Enjoy. Let's, let's start with what you're eating. I mean, describe how you're eating. Describe what you've been doing. I, I believe in intermittent fasting personally from my journey of trying different diets and different approaches to getting nutrition. So I eat around the perimeter of the grocery store, thanks to you. Yeah. <laughs> and this challenge has really opened up my eyes too about what quality foods I'm eating, protein and so mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so what I'm eating is basically whole foods, but I can eat anything really. I can have ice cream, I can have chips. If I want a donut, that's fine. Uh, I can have alcohol or not. And so I'm eating what my body tells me I need or want to eat. So it, it all is situational, but really what it comes down to is I'm not denying myself any food. I'm just kind of delaying when I'm eating so that there's a cutoff so that I have the nutrition I need to function each day and get the nutrients and everything, um, but I'm not going to deny myself if I want something special or a treat or whatever people want to label those, those yeah. foods as. Yeah. I love that. I mean, you know, we talk about 80-20, that's, yeah. and that's exactly what you're speaking to, but now what's your window? Because I know there's a lot of yeah. variation with intermittent fasting. What's your eating window? So it wasn't always like this. But right now, I'm in what I call the maintaining stage because I'm working out and this is just where I'm at. It works for me. So I break at noon and then I close my window at 8. So what that means is I eat at 12, I have my lunch, which is my main source of food, and then I have a snack in between and then I have a healthy dinner. And, and then I'm done eating at 8. And if I need to eat earlier, I can. If I need to eat later, I can. If I'm not hungry at noon, I can wait. Like this week, I had to eat at one because I just got so busy, I just didn't have an opportunity to eat, nor was I hungry. So it all, it all kind of depends. Weekends, um, I'm a little bit looser because there's a lot going on. Something might pull me in a direction where, hey, we're gonna eat earlier, grill, or someone's going over, or uh, having us, over to their house and we're eating a brunch, you know, so sure. it, it changes. Yeah, but usually 12 to 8 is my eating window right now. What led you to doing that? Like what, what made you change to intermittent fasting? What, I guess, made it sound appealing to you? I had a, my sister-in-law lost a lot of weight doing intermittent fasting. And I huh. just had two kids. I was kind of just stuck in this mom mode. Um, I was trying to get myself out and my head above water from that world. And when she told me it was she was doing intermittent fasting, I thought I'm gonna give it a try. And so I started it and it took me quite some time in the beginning to adjust. And I listened to podcasts and I read the book and I just got as much information as I could. And it just naturally worked for me. I wasn't starving, I didn't get the highs, I didn't get the lows, I didn't have to only eat this kind of food. Uh, I could eat whatever I want, I just had to manage. And, and also, when you have two kids, or any kids, <laughs> meal prep is a big deal. Like, prepping sure. food, making sure that they're fed, um, that was always my priority and myself, but like, not having to prepare a food or a meal for me because I was fasting, made it so much easier. Okay. So I would go to work not having to have breakfast prepped in my shake or whatever like I used to try and run out the door. I would just grab my lunch and go. So it was very convenient for me to have okay. one less meal to prepare for, for me personally. I think that's big. And that's something we've, we've talked about too, is some of the 
the benefit of intermittent fasting is a lifestyle benefit, not necessarily a nutritional benefit. And if it just fits the pattern of your day or your week, maybe that's the way to go. Yeah. And you mentioned an adjustment period when you started. What does that mean? Does that mean lifestyle or is that like denying hunger pains kind of thing? Denying hunger pains okay. and just kind of adjusting because I, I, I would wake up and want to have breakfast at eight. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to push it off until nine. And wow, one day I pushed it off until 11. But then, you know, if I pushed off my window, maybe I could have it an open eating window a little bit longer. But then I started kind of creeping that in a little bit. So I just started to work on managing the start and end time. It took me about 43 days. I'm not going to About? That seems awfully specific. <laughs> well, because in the book, in the podcast, they say it should be about 28. But it took me, I remember on that 43rd day or 42nd, 43rd, I was like, like, I really feel I am now not hungry, not craving, not like I was, it was, I was able to just do it. And I did it from then on um, to this point. I've been doing it for a year and a half and, and I wouldn't change it. I love it. It's, it's great. So besides the kind of practical benefit of having a preference breakfast, why does it work? Or why do you think it didn't work for you? Uh, I think because... <laughs> Before I did this, I would just eat, I would eat meals. I, I would watch what I would eat, but like, I didn't really know what that feeling of fullness was. And this taught me, it gave me those, that awareness of being satiated. So all of a sudden I'm like, when you're feeling full, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna put this down, I'm not hungry. And that was difficult for me before I did intermittent fasting because the foods I was eating and when I was eating and having the gravies all the time, like. I just didn't really, my body wasn't communicating with me clearly because I had, I was all gunked up, if that makes any sense. Okay. I just, when you intermittent fast, you hit this level of ketosis. That's the whole fasting part of it. And I'm pulling, my energy's coming from like the deep freezer <laughs> instead of just like the refrigerator that you constantly go in and out of. And when you're eating all day, you're just going in and out of that deep freezer. But the fasting allowed me to kind of dig deeper into the freezer. I know it's so silly. No, it makes sense. But it just, it, yeah. it, and then I wasn't hungry and, and it just worked for me. And I got so much more energy. Like just by not, because when I eat, then I get a little bit tired and fatigued and I can feel that. But when I'm not eating and I'm fasting and my body's working and I just have more energy and I just feel more, I have more clarity. And I just feel good, I feel real good. I think that's an important skill to learn. Feeling hungry is not the end of the world. It shouldn't be this panic mode. We have to go grab food right now. And especially for anyone who is trying to lose weight, that's going to happen with some kind of a calorie deficit. There, there will be some point where you are denying a meal or a food or whatever. Um, and being able to deal with a tolerable amount of hunger pain, yeah. it's, a, it's a skill that I think is important. And yeah, the awareness of being full, I think that's something that goes underappreciated because most people don't know what that feels like. It's and myself included, I'm sure. I, I, I do the same thing. Yeah. Um, I'm a binge eater by nature. It's very easy to just keep going and keep going and keep going. Yeah. And in the beginning, I was a bit ravenous, just trying to figure it all out. And then again, when those 42, 43 days went by, that's when I was like, I don't, I don't need to eat right now. Like something just clicked. Yeah. And so the binging, which I would also do, you know, I just eat it, it, everything just kind of evened out and toned down. And then my body would tell me what I wanted. Like you want to eat this, you're craving foods that I never thought I would want to have. Like I was craving fish. That was another, I just want fish. I want crab, you know, or mm. I want I want asparagus. asparagus. Yeah. <laughs> and I never eat asparagus as often as I did at the at one point. Yeah, your body just tells you what it, it wants. It's so bizarre. But yeah, I think that's really cool. interesting because it, yeah, it's, it's not what you expect to gain from making a diet change. Mm -hmm. It's that kind of awareness or that your body can actually tell you that is yeah. interesting. Yeah. What's been hard? What's been a challenge with intermittent fasting? So just in the beginning, not eating meals with my family was tough at first because in the very beginning, like 
if I started at eight, then I would be done at three, and then I would not eat dinner, let's say. And so I adjusted my window. I'm like, well, maybe if I push it back and I start my window at noon, then I can eat dinner with them and have a lunch and a dinner with my kids. So in the beginning, and I started this in the summer, so I, I was just constantly making food and feeding my kids and always around meal prep and just being real busy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think the hardest part was making sure that I had a meal with my, or not having a meal with my family, but then I adjusted that and they are completely supportive. They're not, there's no issue with it. So I have lunch and I have dinner with my family every day. Well, in the summer. Yeah, it certainly seems that breakfast, at least socially, is the easier meal to skip if you're going to skip one. Yeah. Um, again, I'm sure there's a million things happening at your house in the morning. Yep. Yeah, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so, how, does that work with your husband, with kids? What, what are the challenges of making it work with the rest of the family? So now we are in the groove where in the morning, my husband is sis like physically sitting down with my girls, eating mm -hmm. breakfast together. And I am moving around, getting ready to get out the door. I have my lunch packed. I already know what I'm gonna have prepared ahead of time. And um, then, off to work, we come home, and then we start dinner prep, and I make a meal, and we all sit down every night, and we eat dinner together. And that is like our time to enjoy and indulge if needed, if I want a cocktail, or I want to have dessert, I can have it. I'm not denying myself anything, but when I am full, I put the fork down. Okay. And that has been, again, the, my brain communicating with me saying, you are full, you don't need to eat everything that's on your plate. So that's, that's been, that's kind of our routine. That is our routine. Yeah, and from the outside, that's, that's right where my mind goes when I think about intermittent fasting is, well, if I fast until 12 or 1 or whatever, am I going to get to that point and just inhale everything in the kitchen because I'm so hungry? So how are you avoiding that? Or do you even feel that urge anymore? I don't. Okay. No, in the beginning I did. And then I... I, I eat my, my food slowly and, you know, and, and I eat quality foods now too. So I always open my window with something grown from the earth or something that is a whole food. Like I never open with a bag of chips or pretzels or something that is processed. And that's just a commitment that I've made to myself because I don't want to spike my insulin. I don't want to um, open, give my body the first taste of fuel and nutrients that aren't healthy and whole. They, I, I want to give myself something real. And so I always start with like an apple or carrots or cucumbers. So that'll be my opener. And then I'll start, I'll move on to my protein, the salad or, you know, whatever it is I'm eating at the time. It could be anything, you know. And so then I eat my meal and once I'm done, I'm full. That's it. I'm finished. And it holds me over. I'm not hungry like I used to be. Oh, it's an hour or two later. I need to eat more. I don't have to do that. I'm not hungry. Hmm. I know. No, <laughs> it's I, pretty cool. I think that's <laughs> great. Works. It works that's for really me. Great. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, what, I guess, other than kind of messing with the window, what other adjustments have you had to make from when you started day one to what you're doing now? I had to adjust to people and okay. their comments. Okay. And, you know, why aren't you eating, you know, or, you know, you don't want this donut? No, 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 I'll take the donut. I'll eat it later during my window kind of deal. Um, when I was working at school, I didn't have a, a lunch window. I was really, my window was really tight. I was, I was doing great. I would break after school. So I would get home at four and I would have a window. So I'd have a, a four to nine window. So a, basically a 19 hour fast and a five hour window. And that worked for me really well. Once I was in it, it took months to get there, but I was just really busy and that would have, that's what I did at one point. And um, people would say, well, you're not eating lunch? I'm like, I'm just, I'm not hungry. I don't need, I don't need to eat right now. But see, that was the extreme. I've sure. now adjusted again <laughs> to where a 12 and an eight just really works for me. So other than that, I don't think I've had okay. really any other issues other than when I go somewhere and the only option is maybe not healthy food and that's how I'm gonna open. I don't like that feeling where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna have to open with this. Right. So I sometimes, if I know ahead of time, I'll just throw a banana in my bag or, you know, just mm -hmm. have something 
Whole Foods wise to open with. Okay. Yeah. Since we were talking about creating habits that have helped you stay on track with what you're doing beforehand, and I mean, you're struggling to think of some then, but those are fantastic to, to open with something that is really healthy so that it's not, you know, the bag of chips we could all eat endlessly. That's not filling you up. There is no full, there's just when the bag is empty. Um, so yeah, opening with that, when you are gonna go somewhere, prepping for it, that's huge. Yeah. That's huge, and that's a lot of what we talk about anyway, whether you do intermittent fasting or whatever you follow. Be prepared for it. Yeah. Fruit is super portable. It also doesn't need to be refrigerated, so easy to throw in a bag and just have it with you. I mean, yeah, maybe you don't run and grab something a little less healthy, but. And, I, and with kids, I'm always have, I always have food with right. me. And so I always grab something healthy, you know, and they yeah. see me eating that too. So I'm also setting a good example for them. You know? well, that's great. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Um, so if someone was going to start, yeah. suggestions? Yes. What, where would you? Um, there's ton, there are tons of podcasts out there, but I listen to one specifically. It's this intermittent fasting podcast with okay. Melanie Avalon. Avalon and Jim Stevens, and there's this book, you can get it on audio or hard copy, and it's called Delay, Don't Deny. Those were the two staples that helped me get educated on this whole lifestyle. Um, and then there's also like online blogs and things that you can you know reach out to, but those were the two factors that really helped me get started. And then I cleaned out my pantry. I went through everything. I said, I don't know. Like, I just kind of went, because what's in your pantry, you're going to eat. Yep. And so, if you clean oh, yeah. it out, and I remember you mentioned that, or you referenced that at some point about it, just eating whatever you have at home is what you're going to eat. So, if you don't buy it, you're not going to eat it. And yeah, use the willpower at the grocery store, not in your kitchen. Yes. That's, that's where you use it. So, that was a good kickstart. And then I just started with a plan. I was like, okay, I'm gonna try and see if I can wait to eat my breakfast until this time. And I'll start at nine. Okay, great, that worked out. All right, I'm gonna push it off to 9.30. Nope, 9.30 is not gonna work, I'm really hungry. You know, so you can give yourself permission to be able, yeah. be able to say, all right, it's not gonna work today, I'll try again next time or tomorrow. Like your day's not ruined if you open early or have a longer or shorter window. Okay. It, it really, there's no keeping score. It's just, you just listen to your body, you just kind of keep working with what works best for you. And that's so important because I think, especially with intermittent fasting and some other diets, people want to put that label, that really strict label, this is what I do and I follow these parameters yeah. so rigidly. And in my mind, that's never the way to success because what's going to work for you is the thing that works for you long term. Mm -hmm. So adjusting that window, having that, well, we have a, we have a social event that starts at 11 a.m. So I'm gonna have something then. That's yeah. That it doesn't derail everything that you've done in the past year and a half. I think that's really important. Uh, one other thing you mentioned that uh, made me think of another question. So you mentioned like if you go somewhere and there's donuts and you're not gonna eat it there, you're gonna take it home. Does that like that delaying? Does that also lead you to not binge on it? Because then you've had this whole day to think about this donut and it's not a reaction. Donuts and, gone kind of thing. Uh -huh. and, then, and most of the times when it comes home, I don't even eat it. <laughs> that's where I was kind of going with that. I was wondering if that happened. Like I take it and I know it's there and I have it and the, the, the luster is has worn off, you know, because when it's all in front of you and everyone's enjoying and socializing, that's great. But I remove it. I take it with me. And sometimes I eat it. Sometimes I don't. And if I do, I don't regret it at all. You know, it's not like I, I have guilt. You know, it's just... It all, it's all situational, it all depends. Yeah. Right, you're, you're much less likely to like, regret eating a donut than not eating a donut. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna, oh, I missed out on that donut yesterday. <laughs> my, my whole week is off, yeah. yeah. No, I think that's really cool. Um, yeah, and, and again, what I'm hearing, what I just mentioned too is, you know, pick whatever you want, pick whatever starting point you want, but you have to be willing to adjust it. You have to be willing to make it work long term. Um, and you mentioned lazy macros has changed it a little bit. Huge. What's what's changed from doing lazy macros? Uh, because now I'm, I'm my goal is to make sure what I eat has a certain number of protein in it, or okay. I'm making sure that I am measuring out and weighing to have this amount of fruit and vegetables every day. So the challenge has brought more attention to 
what I'm eating and how much when it comes to those two factors, protein and fruits and veggies. Um, so I, it just brought light to it. And instead of wasting, <laughs> wasting the food, because you get full. So I can only consume so much during a day. And if I'm gonna do this challenge successfully, which my intention is, I wanna make sure that what I'm eating counts towards the goal. So thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm glad that that's been helpful. Yeah. That's really cool. No, I, I, tons, tons of great information there. And I mean, I'm learning too. There's a lot I don't know about intermittent fasting. And I'm, I'm sitting here now like considering it uh, or versions of it, because I think that's one thing I've noticed with lazy macros too. I am a person every two to three hours I'm eating something. Mm -hmm. And with lazy macros, because I'm eating all of this fruit, there have been times where I just skip that one snack and I feel fine, which mm -hmm. is strange to me, where I usually you can set a watch to my stomach. Yeah. Um, I know what I'm gonna be eating next. Constant grazer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is exactly me. Yeah, um, I used to be like that. Okay. And now the, the, the one thing I do have to quickly say is coffee, because that's a huge, factor for people and everyone's like oh I can't have my I, I need my coffee every morning mm -hmm. I don't drink coffee but if you drink black coffee it will not break your fast mm -hmm. but if you put creamer or even a sugar substitute anything with flavoring it's going to break your fast so the podcast in the book recommends trying to slowly wean off of having that creamy latte coffee and more making it black and get to the point where you can have it black or maybe you can do without the coffee with all the fillers, you know, just don't have coffee at all. Right. Um, so that was one thing that I know people on the podcast struggled with and kept writing about. Does this count? Does this count? What about coffee? But ultimately- <laughs> but you have to ask. It, it counts. It counts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you're questioning it. Yep. Yeah, so it, that's like the one major issue that people were like, I can't give my coffee up. Well, you don't have to give it up. You can delay it. Oh, I need my morning cup of coffee. Okay, have it black. And you, your taste will adjust. You yeah. will adjust. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been great. No, super helpful. I mean, I mean big takeaways, yeah. Be flexible. Mm -hmm. Understand that if you are making a change, there will be a sacrifice at some point. There's something you're going to give up or you're going to change. It's going to be a challenge. But as you've mentioned, with almost every aspect of this, you adjust, whether it's dealing with the hunger or um, whether it's socially skipping the breakfast at home with the family. You adjust, people around you adjust. Just takes a little time, a little consistency. But thank you, I appreciate you coming in and talking about it. Mm -hmm. Hopefully this will help people out a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if they have questions, they can track you down and yeah. ask you. Yeah, cool. That'd be thank great. You. All right, thanks.